we want to evaluate the limits. We have the limit of x plus the square root of the quantity x squared plus 7x as x approaches negative infinity. Let's first check the form of the limit. x is approaching negative infinity. And now let's focus on the square root. And we can ignore the plus 7x because the x squared has a higher degree. The x squared will overpower the plus 7x as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, we square the value and they take the square root. When we square the negative, it's gonna be positive, and therefore the values increase without bound and approach positive infinity. So the form is negative infinity plus infinity, which is not zero, this is an indeterminate form. We'll have to perform algebra on the function to then hopefully determine the limit. So we'll write the expression for the function as a fraction with the denominator of one, and then multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. And the conjugate is x minus the square root of the quantity x squared plus 7x. And now we multiply. Multiplying the conjugates, we have x times x, which is x squared. The sum of the next two products will be zero because we have conjugates. And the last product is square root of the quantity x squared plus 7x times negative square root of the quantity x squared plus 7x, which gives us minus the quantity x squared plus 7x. The denominator is just x minus the square root of the quantity x squared plus 7x. Let's simplify the numerator. We have x squared minus x squared minus 7x. The numerator simplifies to negative 7x. And the denominator remains the same for now. If we try to find the limit in this form, we still have an indeterminate form. So now we'll use a previous strategy of dividing everything by the highest power of x from the denominator. And therefore we'll divide everything by x. Here we do have the square root of x squared, but remember the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. So again, we'll divide everything by x for the next step. We'll have to be careful here when dividing the square root by x because you do want to bring the x under the square root. So simplifying, in the numerator we have negative seven x divided by x, which is negative seven. In the denominator we have x divided by x, which is one. Now here's where we have to be careful. We have this x outside the square root. We want to bring it under the square root, but we also don't want to lose a sign. Remember, x is approaching negative infinity, so this is a negative x value. So if we take a look at our notes below, we know the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x, but when x is negative, we would express the absolute value of x as the opposite of x. So if we have the opposite of x is equal to the square root of x squared, we have x equals the opposite of the square root of x squared. So when we put the x under the square root and square it, we have to include an extra negative outside the square root, and therefore this becomes plus, and then we have the square root of x squared divided by x squared plus 7x divided by x squared. So again, because we know x is negative, we can't lose this sign. We include an extra negative sign, which makes this plus, and then we can bring the x under the square root to divide by x squared. Simplifying one more time, we have negative seven divided by one plus the square root of x squared divided by x squared is one plus seven x divided by x squared simplifies to seven divided by x. So the original limit is equal to the limit of negative seven divided by the sum of one and the square root of one plus seven divided by x as x approaches negative infinity. The only part that's affected by x is seven divided by x. Seven divided by x approaches zero as x approaches negative infinity and therefore the limit is equal to negative seven divided by the sum of one and the square root of one, which simplifies to negative seven halves. And now let's look at the second limit. The only difference for the second limit is x is approaching positive infinity. Let's begin by checking the form. Again, x is approaching infinity, and then we have plus, the square root is also approaching infinity as x approaches infinity, and therefore the form is infinity plus infinity, well, if both of these are increasing without bound, then the limit is equal to positive infinity. No extra algebra is needed. 
we can determine the limit by simply analyzing the function in its current form. I hope you found this helpful.